Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at the iPad and iPad OS 26. But more specifically, we're going to be looking at how the iPad is now more Mac-like than ever and more versatile than ever. And I'm going to show you some really cool Apple shortcuts that I built um, to automate how it connects to the monitor and becomes more of that laptop experience. How it is more of an iPad when it's just outside of the kind of Mac-like experience and using the Apple Pencil as well to switch between um, different modes as well. And I think this is really, really cool. It really adds this super dynamic aspect to the iPad that I feel is closer, not just to a Mac, but to being this everyday, super uh, dynamic device that we've never really had before. Yeah, we've got mobile phones that can do tons of things. It can be like a gaming device. It can be your, your maps and everything. But from that hybrid, tablet to computer aspect, we've never really had this before. I guess you can argue that um, Samsung's Galaxy Fold 7, um, their latest foldable to come out, is that perfect device that can do um, be a phone, it can be a tablet, and it can also plug into a monitor to do decks, which is really cool. But I feel like this is like a testing ground for what is going to be the iPhone Fold when that comes out. So let's dive in and let's have a look. So. This is my main screen. This is what I call iPad mode. There is a um, shortcut window I have here that I have Mac mode, creative, gaming, and iPad mode. Right now it is an iPad mode. Yes, I was watching Family Guy very recently. And so I've got this to laid out to be used as I would typically use an iPad for media consumption, uh, which is what a lot of people use um, tablets for. However, when I plug in this USB-C cable, you'll see on the monitor that it switches to this desktop-like mode. Now this is really cool because you've got dual screen here, you've got a very Mac-like experience, and if I open up, say, Safari here, um, where I've got, I've got these different tabs open, and this is very much like a experience using Safari. You've got now in iPad OS 26. And bear in mind, this is just a beta, so not everything is final. It's slightly buggy. Uh, they may be adding or taking away features. So this isn't final, but as it stands now, this is beta five and it's a very, very smooth experience. Um, and you can see you've got these tabs up here. Uh, you've got four websites that act just like they would on the Mac as well. Um, you've got these download um, section here so you can like kind of look at your uh, downloads and your document folder which you can add into there as well and then also as well you've got these this windowing where you can actually resize this however you want um, I can open up another app here so I've got Apple Music here and um, I can move this across so if I bring up like let's say the news app let's move that into this kind of window feature as well um, and we'll just add up um, add in the uh, App Store. Now I can hold down. So you've got the same kind of Mac like icons here. So I can move it to the left, the right, top, bottom, or I can arrange my windows um, however I like in these kind of patterns as a full window split into three or four. So we're going to go with four. Um, and it just moves these windows to be four. And I can scroll through all of these as well. And then if I want to, I can even add Apple TV down here as well. So I can watch something on this iPad screen. Um, so it's really, really dynamic, but it gets even cooler than that. So, so this is in the windowing feature where uh, the window apps are switched on. So if I turn that off, it will go to the full screen um, windows like you typically are used to with an iPad. Now, if I want to go into a creative mode, I can just, take my Apple Pencil and squeeze it and it will change the iPad into this um, creative mode where I've got these creative apps on here. So I've got create, uh, Procreate, Pixelmator, uh, Freeform where I can do some planning for my YouTube videos, um, Final Cut Pro, LumaFusion for video editing and YouTube Studio so I can keep track of um, what's happening within my YouTube channel. Um, and I've added the little widget here for music so I can just play some music um, whilst I'm doing some 
you know, thumbnail creation or whatever. Um, sadly though, when you do squeeze on the Apple Pencil again, it doesn't take you out of this mode. So I have got this iPad mode here, so I can just, it just takes me back to the iPad mode. Now what's really cool as well is that when you connect things, so you've got this USB-C cable that you connect to the monitor, it goes into the Mac mode. When you squeeze the Apple Pencil, it goes into Creative mode. But if I grab my PlayStation DualSense controller uh, and I press the PlayStation button, you're going to see this now goes into a gaming mode. So whenever you connect a controller, whether it's wired or wireless, it will, move, it will switch into the um, gaming um, focus mode. It's really cool and you can control the apps on here as well using the controller. So I can move along to whatever app I want to use. So let's go into Resident Evil 3 here. Cool. So the game's loading now and we're in the game. And now I can just use my controller to play Resident Evil, which is really awesome. Now the graphics on this are really, really good. I think the iPad is such a cool um, and has so much potential to be like a gaming, a portable gaming um, screen that you can just carry with you with this controller, boom. And it just makes a lot of sense. Um, and her backbone's got a new Backbone Pro controller, which is really awesome. So I'm gonna stop playing that because I'm going to not stop playing it. So yeah, so if I come out of that, if I turn off the controller here, it takes a few seconds for this to turn off, but once it does turn off, Boom. So that's off and it's gone back into the iPad mode, um, which I can then do iPad-y things. So if I want to watch Disney Plus, obviously I can just tap it. I don't have to have the Apple Magic Keyboard. Um, and I can just watch whatever in my hand. So yeah, and then I can just watch whatever. Um, this is such a cool, like I love what they've done with iOS 26. I love the look of it. I love the feel of it. I, I do like the liquid glass aspect. I think it's still got a way to go just in terms of legibility and everything, but the glassy effect is really nice. I would never use the the clear apps that they have because for me personally anyway, um, I like to see the different colors because it, for my brain to actually process what's on screen, it works better. Uh, it does look cool, but I wouldn't use that. But that's basically how the iPad can be used in those different modes for just the iPad itself. But when you connect this with a Mac, it can go even further because you can actually use this as either an extended display to the Mac or you can use continuity. So you can use like sidecar mode or you can use like continuity, which I'm going to show you now. So if you go to the top control center here, you can actually go to this icon and then you can select, I'm going to set my iPad, which is called screen. And now this is going to connect to the iPad. There you go. And now I have a screen. So you can see my mouse is in there. Um, I can open up whatever I want here. So let's say the Mac App Store. Um, so I want to look up Assassin's Creed. Boom, and then Assassin's Creed Shadows there. Um, I can even move that up to here as well. So I've now got a dual screen setup, which is really, really cool. Um, but on top of that, you can actually control the iPad without having to mirror your screen or extend your screen. So I'm going to do that. So if I take this off here, now the iPad has gone back into its standard iPad mode here. Um, now if I'm on the mouse on here, you can actually move the mouse to the side and you'll see here, and uh, maybe I'll do it on the other side so you can see better. But you'll see that it kind of creates this, like it's popping out. So on the Mac, I pull to the side and you'll see this icon. And then on here, you'll see, and then I just pull through. And there you go. The mouse for the Mac is actually controlling the iPad now. And I'm doing that with just my trackpad which is really, really cool. So this allows me to do certain things. So say, for example, I want to go onto the music app here. So um, that's not music, this is music. Um, and I want to play some songs and then, which I'm not going to do because they're not royalty free. Let's say I want to go onto Safari here and I want to bring up YouTube. Um, and here is YouTube. So I've now got my screen down here and my screen here as well. 
Within settings as well, under display, I can actually arrange my screen. So I can actually select the iPad here uh, to go underneath. So I can just move my mouse up and down, and then I'm moving between the iPad and really, really cool, really, really smooth process. I can just like quit the app on here. I can quit all my apps if I want to um, and go back into the iPad mode. I can then do whatever I want to do on the iPad with my trackpad on keyboard. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how dynamic the iPad is. So you've got the Mac that can control the iPad with like Sidecar using it as an extended display or mirroring your Mac. Uh, you can just use your iPad as an iPad, but you can just move the mouse between the Mac and the, the iPad itself. And then the iPad by itself can be a gaming machine, a creative machine, just a regular iPad for media consumption. And then you've also got that Mac mode like experience where it's not as full features as a Mac and you haven't got the freedom, you're still restricted within what Apple allows you to do. But because of the ecosystem that, you know, crosses paths with one another and you've got iCloud that syncs everything together and you've got Apple services and everything, that does allow you to have that more dynamic experience. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you have an iPad or a Mac? Do, what do you prefer using? Do you prefer a laptop experience? There's also rumors about a foldable iPad that will, or foldable Mac, I don't know, maybe a foldable iPad that opens up into like a Mac, like laptop. Um, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'd be really interested to know. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe and see you next time. Peace.